This Racecraft TV stream is brought to you by Artesian Builds. Artesian Builds high quality custom PCs made to order for a low price. Contact Artesian Builds today to get started on your own custom PC as low as $64 a month. All Artesian Builds are made live on stream. You can watch your builds and talk to the builders live at twitch.tv forward slash Artesian Builds. For more information about Artesian Builds, check the link in the description. Live tonight from the virtual Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park, we say good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to round six of the virtual off-road racing series Pro 2 Championship on Racecraft TV. And happy that you're with us tonight as we make a trip back out to Chandler, Arizona for a second time this year as we get set for round number six of eight on this 2020 championship, where, as always, alongside Austin Knight, my name is Evan Pasoko, but Austin, we saw our fourth different race winner in five weeks last time out at Wild West, where Joshua Gaiman got his first win of the year and made a very interesting points battle for the top four. Yeah, we have a full, we have a three-way tie for second place between Brandon Proudfoot, Joshua Edison, and Joshua Gaiman here in the virtual off-road racing series. And I was talking with the guys. They were met, they were joking that everybody except for Cameron uh, gets an EOL in this three-way tie. But no, it's the top four. Um, the top four. So we're including Joshua Gaiman in this. They're all going to be tied. And so they're all going to be starting from the back. EOL for the top four instead of usually the top three. But Cameron Peterson still on top of that championship by 14 points. Can we have our fifth new winner today? It's always a chance, you know, I think that a lot of those guys on the bubble, the likes of Drapkin, Fox, and Meninga, who have been in positions, and for some of them who have gotten podium finishes over the course of the first five weeks of this series, I think have a chance to kind of slide in and make some noise. But as you mentioned, that three-way tie for second, going to send four to the rear. So maybe this could be an opportunity for one of those drivers not affected by the invert to win. I think that's one of the best parts about the rules package for this series. Make sure that those guys very fast going to have to do some work to come for the back to the front every single week. We are already into tonight's 10-minute open qualifier. Top of the left of your screen, you can see that Cam Peterson right now, the best of this. They have a long way to go, and I know that all of these races in these Pro 2s are e-short course, if you will, but especially back here at Wild Horse Austin, it is short course, shortest one we see at just six tenths of a mile in length, only five quarters. See the track map now up on the right hand side of your screen, all except basically turn one and then five, where they're a little bit wider, are all hairpins. So this is definitely a track where I don't think we're going to see the field spread way apart. And it was such a great race. First time we came here when Brandon Proudfoot won it. Yeah, the first time we came here, it got a little bit crazy. Uh, there were some big incidents that left Joshua Edmondson off into the pit lane for a race that he wants to forget. But looking around the field, Cameron Peterson is still the main target. And what we saw right there by the four of uh, Cole Ashlock is what we saw a lot happening last time we came here. Uh, where they just got off onto that bump on the inside of, of the track. And uh, once they hit that, that just upset the car so much. And... Uh, really caused a lot of uh a lot of questioning on how to handle these trucks over some of these bumps he over rotated and you get onto that inside berm almost and and there's really nothing you can do and also when you're in traffic if you over rotate that truck a little bit someone's going to be driving into the back of you so there is that pressure where if you're a little bit off into the corner you can't really just get out of the gas and readjust you're going to be run over or passed by the two three trucks behind you as Ooh. you can see drap can take a little bit of a uh, flat spin off the side of the jump another big part of the racetrack that we'll be following tonight i feel like 
is that whoop section just out of four into five. So where you can see that middle portion of the field right now, you know, there, that's a very tricky part to keep the truck grounded. It's going to get really upset depending on what angle you go at those at, what speed you go at those at. You talk about trucks getting hiked up and flipping on those berms like this on the inside of the corner. We saw equally as many issues last time out in that whoop section. I actually saw a little bit of a unique strategy of a few guys going completely to the left of the whoops and just missing them completely. I wonder if the rules package uh, changed to uh, keep drivers from attempting that uh, little skip. Well, we know that these drivers are always going to try to find a little bit extra, right? They're always going to want to push it to the limit. And these are, as we say every week, the best of the best in short course racing on the sim. There's a couple of trucks upside down in turn one right now in the qualifier. Josh Fox, who you look at him right now, still fifth on the board in qualifying. His time about two tenths off of the very top which is where Cam Peterson sits. Nobody, though, has gotten down to what Peterson did in practice with a 36-1, his best in practice, or quality right now, a 36-2, still good enough uh, for the best so far, but it uh, just goes to show you that Cam Peterson is always one to be reckoned Ooh. with, right? A four point in the championship advantage is was that Tyson Miller up and on the guardrail in front that of him? I think was, it was Miller. That was the, the Terminator, Terminator Tyson Miller. Yeah, went up and over, so that's going to uh, scratch his lap from P10 right now. You know, we saw the points, though. 14-point advantage for Cam Peterson. Is it a lot? No. But in the context of even on his bad nights, Cam Peterson still in the top half of the field. You know, we talked about how this is a super cross style point system. So 26 for the win, 23 for second. Then it goes to a two-point interval, 21 points for third, 19 for fourth, and then single digits. It's heavily weighted at the top. Cam Peterson's going to need at least, I think, one finish outside of the top seven if drivers were to make up that gap. Because it doesn't matter if you win. If he's finishing second, you're only going to get three points a week. And after tonight, with only two more races left this season, we'll go back to Crandon for a trip to the short course and the long course. You're going to need more than that. Yeah, Cameron Peterson definitely needs... He d he's not in the clear of the woods just yet because... Like we saw last time, the reverse grid here at Wild West, it's so hard to pass at this track that this is where Cameron Peterson took his win and took charge of the championship because of just lucking out of the top three when they came here. Yeah, he found himself at a good spot, and we mentioned four different race winners in five races this season. Uh, we saw Edmondson and Proudfoot win the first two weeks, and then it was Peterson winning here. 22-lap uh, feature, by the way, tonight, same distance as what we saw in that third race of the year, but this kind of boosted his season, right? He didn't have a great opening week. He was fast. Was it untouchable? He kind of got caught out by that mid-race caution, and then the other drivers took advantage of it. One at Wild Horse here last time, and then one at the short course at Crandon, which we will be back to in two weeks' time on December the 20th, back here on Racecraft TV. So those Ooh. situations, as you can see, another truck way off, and that's not what Joshua Gaiman wants to do. Defending race winner, he won two weeks ago at Wild West. But Cam Peterson's got two tracks back-to-back -back that he's already won at this year. He can put this championship on lock if he can repeat those performances. Yeah, very, very interesting. As Donald King performed a slide job, but actually uh, hit the 12 of Trent Briley. But, yeah, you definitely want to repeat, uh, repeat the wins here. And that mid-race caution... It, that one lap cost to rejoin the field is going to be a big opportunity for these guys uh, to make up some moves at the start of this race and then find a rhythm and then do it again on that restart, especially for those championship leaders. Cameron Peterson being the top point scorer will be starting all the way at the back of that three-way tie. So if anyone's saying he is overpowered, well, he's got three guys battling for second place in front of him. In this, you know, we weren't sure how competitive that race for second was going to be, right? But game over the race win, obviously, makes up a ton in the championship. Edmondson's actually been on the back foot, right? Edmondson won that season opener on the long layout of Crandon way back in September when we started this eight-week championship. I'm looking for Josh Edmondson, P2, as qualifying hit zero, and the trucks who are already on an active lap have the opportunity to finish it if they so please. I'm looking for Edmondson, honestly, to bounce back tonight. 
and get into that spirit. I think he really feels like he deserves P2 in this championship, maybe even to challenge Cam Peterson for the title, but he needs to pick it up. It's been a rough couple of weeks. I'm going to say Connor Barry or Brian Prudell. These two guys are not in the top four. They're going to be a very big surprise as they're going to be starting on the front row here. One of those two drivers might take charge of this. Or Josh Fox. He's been having a very uh, underwhelming season. But one of these top three, Connor Berry, Josh Fox, or Brian Prudell, are definitely going to be some of the drivers to be looking forward to as qualifying is now finished in three. There we go. And here is our starting grid. So we know Cam Peterson on pole position. He will drop to the back. So will Josh Edmondson. So Brian Prudel in third. He ends up as the de facto qualifier for pole in this one. Then Connor Berry will start in the number four spot. Josh Fox, Zachary Drapkin starting five and six. And you got Brandon Proudfoot tied for second in the points. He will get sent to the back. Cole Ashlock starts eighth. Joshua Begame and also to the rear after qualifying in ninth. And Tyson Miller rounds out your top ten. They're followed by Beauty Carrar and Trenton Briley in 11th and 12th with Donald King, Jack Brooker, and Oliver Golding completing this 15-car grid here in Wild West, Wild Horse Motorsports Park. It looks like Golding going to miss the start of this one. Was interested to see what he could have done uh, as one of the drivers. You know, get a new face in there and whatnot. But I think we've learned over the five rounds that have been completed to this point. Um, you know, I think these drivers have had an opportunity for those who, you know, may not have known each other outside of this series on Sundays. And most of them race official and even some hosts stuff together as well in the short course community on the sim. So it's not a big number, but they've kind of had an opportunity to feel each other out. They're comfortable with what they've got versus the field. And I think we are in store not only for a great race here tonight, but a great closing three rounds of this championship lined up behind the iRacing official pace truck. Uh, we'll get ready to go racing as remember it'll be peterson proudfoot edmondson gaiman to the rear of the field so prudel and barry row two become the front runners yeah you can see them already spread it out and dropping all the way to the back four car el the largest el we've had of the season and oh, all these cars are at the front are going to be very interesting to watch connor barrier brian prudel uh beating that front row and of these two, oh, it's going to be very hard. We see Connor Berry, but Brian Prudell is kind of a new name to this series. The triple seven in a very good position. Can he become a possible fifth different race winner as we get set to go racing for round number six? The pace truck off and away. The field in the hands of that triple seven of Brian Prudell. We're happy that you're with us for the virtual off-road racing series on Racecraft TV. As we say, let's go racing from Wild Horse. Oh, there's contact with Josh Fox and Connor Berry already right behind the triple seven as they take into turn one. Prudell, Barry Fox, Drapkin makes a move on Josh Fox as they're going to go side by side. We got a car upside down all the way back as they're going to go three wide into the hairpin. Josh Fox goes down to the inside, but Brian Prudell and Connor Barry are going to go side by side over the jump. Five wide for a moment through turn three. Fox Four wide down. and now Fox is on his lid mid pack. Also hung up on the barrier. I think that was Trenton to Briley and the number nine of Tyson Miller. So big issues in the rear. Up front though, a great battle for second as Connor Berry emerges as your early race leader. Connor Berry's got a great run in front of him. We got a car off the track as well and he's fallen down i believe that was jack brucker right there but it's barry prudell drafting crier proudfoot and oh the seven it, the seven 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 gets a very loose now so he got a two-way fight right behind him and look who is poking his way through the field joshua gaiman <laughs> He's working, of course, wants to go back to back, and he's keeping the truck clean for the most part. There's a bit of a slide as the number five of Bodie Cryer stayed in front of him. Gaiman going to fight his way to the bottom. They'll go side by side for fifth, and they're fighting up the road for second. Here comes Brutal back on the inside of Drapkin. All over each other. It's going to mess up both oh of their quarter goodness. entries. Here comes Proudfoot now. 
three wide over the roller and through all of that big winner Drapkin for the moment but Brandon Proudfoot trying to snake his way through after he started seven. Zachary Drapkin leads this fight for second as Connor Barry's just left them all. Last time by, he was better by more than an entire second over the rest of the field. Now leaning on each other for third as up the road, Drapkin has secured second. Proudfoot gets through on Brian Prudel, and that's going to settle down second, third, and fourth for the moment. Behind them, four fifth is the five. Bodie Cryer trying to hold off Gaiman. But again, one of the four drivers to the rear of the field been working his way through. Way offline goes Cryer. And you can move Gaiman now. Race high, P5 at the end of lap four. As we've right across this race in our Racecraft TV drone camera, following Joshua Gaiman as he makes his way up into fifth. Josh is in an amazing spot right now. And highlight where those four are, right? So Gaiman up to fifth. You've got Edmondson seventh. You have Peterson in eighth. I think sneaking through a lot of that was Brandon Proudfoot. Don't forget the 22 was another one of those trucks that went to the rear at the start of this race. But he has done an impeccable job to bypass all of his championship competitors and get to P2. He still trails Connor Berry by nearly four seconds, but did his part in staying lap out 11. of this early race chaos. Lap 11, he is going to be looking forward to because that's when that driver-led caution is going to happen. And he's got to think at that massive pack behind him. These trucks are going side by side, inside, outside of each other. They're so bunched up. It looks like a NASCAR pack, honestly. And I know this ain't an oval, but this track kind of runs like an oval, especially that final last turn. I said it earlier, we're not going to see the field get spread out. Look at the slide by Gaiman, but saw that coming. It was Drapkin, read it, checked up, crossed him back over, and they trade positions four and five. Now a slide for the 17. Gaiman now back up the inside, working lap seven, an early slide into the corner. Look at Peterson. Oh, He's wow. He's on the berm on the inside, nearly hiked that truck up. I thought he was going to get both of them, but he has to kind of settle it down to recover. This is a great three-way battle. Make it four-way. Cryer wants in on the action. Even Josh Edmondson now quiet thus far in position eight. The lowest of those top championship four wants to get on the action as we ride on board. Edmondson, this witness, probably one of the cleanest pass side by side heading into the hairpin on that entrance. You're going to see the 17 just hit that handbrake and went completely sideways as it looks like the 56 of Zachary Drapkin is using some of the exterior wall as a banking to smoothen the landing of the jump as Edmondson is now on the outside of the five of Beauty Cryer. He's going to try to take it around the outside, but Cryer just has that inside line as they head into the whoops. He's got the better spot. He'll slide that truck in. Can the five go for the crossover? Yes, he does. Back on the bottom is Cryer, but a little bit over-rotating off of the corner, and he's a mess down the front stretch. Give the position to Edmondson, who's now back into seventh, after he was supposed to be P2 on the grid, suffered for the UL. And we talk about the race to the midway point, picking up this battle uh, for position six on back. Drapkin's got it. Edmondson wants that one next. And the other battles, Proudfoot P2 being chased down by Brian Pruel. You've also got even further back, Gaiman and Peterson doing a battle. But we talk about how important the comp yellow is. It'll come in two laps, nine laps down. We just started lap 10. It comes at lap 11. But honestly, Connor Barry is still the fastest truck on track. So don't discount what this 28 truck's doing. Even after I think we slow them down and group them up, he has a real good look at the race win. He's been marvelous so far. Yeah, Barry put it in the fast lap and no one's been able to touch it by two tenths. Connor Barry, 36, 470, and he's going to take the lead as we head into the driver led. Caution and uh, Cole Ashlock looked into the pit lane, but Barry going to be leading out this caution right now. 
or he should yeah, be. See if anybody else gets the spot, but as they there all cross goes. the line now, we'll slow things down. They just wanted to, to give everybody opportunity to fight to the start finish line um, to determine their positioning. So we'll slow things down and, and let's recap the start of this race. Connor Barry maintaining uh, the race lead in this one with Brandon Proudfoot in second, Brian Prudel is third, Joshua Game in fourth, and Cam Peterson in the number five spot. Then Drapkin, Edmondson, Cryer, Ashlock, and even Josh Vox, who was on his lid, Austin, on lap two, is a top ten truck right now, ahead of Jack Bruker, Donald King, Tyson Miller, and then Trenton Briley. Yeah, Josh Fox, great recovery, uh, sits in 10th place, but Connor Barry puts the pedal to the metal. We're going back to racing. Brandon Proudfoot immediately on him, and let's go back to racing some Pro 2s right here. Brian Prudell's missing the entire front nose of his car. And he don't care. He's still digging in P3. The single file start helps Connor Barry here. He dictated when the field restarted, so he's got a bit of a gap. Look behind. Brutal into the side of Proudfoot that time. And the advantage for Barry over Proudfoot. About no truck lengths in the center of the corner. What a slide by Proudfoot, who cut it from three to one. But now a better turn five will open it back up for Barry. Connor Barry getting that lead going. Proudfoot right behind him as Gaiman and Prudell are fouling. And oh, Prudell takes a big hit from the back by Joshua Gaiman. He tries to go around to the outside, but he's not going to be able to do it as, as Cameron Peterson's right there. As they're going to go side by side. The 70 77 of Brian Prudell stays in the lead. He's getting used up right now, and that worked for the pass, right? So he still stays third. Game and try to work on him, but they both need to be worried about that 48 coming up the inside. It's the second of those fistful of bourbon entries for Jim Beaver Esports as Edmondson is chasing Peterson. They are right now six and five on track, and this race may be a battle for second, if not third on the back, because Connor Berry continues to impress. Remember, Fourth on the charts in quali. He was third best in the practice session, but he has been untouchable thus far, and his margin is opening up three tenths last lap better than Proudfoot in second. And ooh, Damon and Pearson getting into each other, uh, sweeping across the whoops and uh, dragging across the track. As Pearson gets ahead of Gaiman right there. We got some filthy looking trucks and a lot of them are beat up right now as Peterson who wants to be on the attack is the one who may have to play defense right now because he's allowed Brutal and Proudfoot to get up the road. Look at the stack up behind. Peterson came in an over rotation. Josh Edmondson who ended up on the bottom and I heard an apology there. I think he might have gotten a little bit into gaming. It got him loosened up. And then a small tap by Drapkin. Drapkin apologized over the radio for the contact. That's why Edmondson got out of control. And a rough couple of weeks continuing for the 58. Yeah, Joshua Edmondson definitely wants to get back onto the right foot here. As, oh my goodness, that's gaming in the fence. Right down in turn one, he was just too far over and he got nicked by those jersey barriers that kind of jet out to protect the flag man. Watch this on board. He's fine with the fence, but right there, right rear, got the K-rail up and onto the catch fence and hooked up in it. The only positive for him was he was able to drive it off the fence, but Gaiman has fallen to 12th in the running order. That's disastrous for one of those drivers who was in that three-way tie for second in the championship. Connor Perry and Brandon Proudfoot leading this race, followed by Brian Prudell, Cameron Pearson, Josh Edmondson, and Beauty Cryer, our top six here at Wild Horse. As Barry leading into another hairpin and into the whoops. Meanwhile, Gaiman's running trucks over the back of the pack. He just shunted Briley for P11. So, you know, he's going to fight for everything he can. But back there, it's only one-point intervals. He's not going to get a good finish in this race unless there's some sort of apocalypse in the top half of the field. Uh, this is one that Gaiman's going to want to get back 
didn't look incredible, but had those moments of brilliance. He had a lot of really good opportunities in this race. Cards just don't fall his way. He's going to have an uphill climb for round seven and round eight. Watching the battle, though, for the race lead. This time by, going to be four laps to go. And that gap that Connor Barry had opened up is Ooh, still a... there a little bit, but it's not huge. That's Josh Edmondson. Fox behind the 777 of Prudel. Edmondson and Prudel got hung up on the K-Rail. And even more disastrous for Edmondson, but Brian Prudell falling down the field even more. And that was all on the triple seven there. Prudell just got loose on his own, spun the truck out. There was nowhere for Peterson to go, and Peterson basically finished him off, but it hurt the 48 also. So the 40 to Peterson ends up third. Prudell all the way down to sixth in the running order. There's a huge slide as he wants a spot back from Josh Fox. It's a five truck battle for fifth Fox on back. Around. And now 12 car around. Fox gave it too much. Same corner that Prudel overcooked it. Man, that the corner before the whoops, that very tight hairpin proving to be very, very massive as we got the fight for the lead with Proudfoot and Barry trying to chase each other's down. And doing what they can, right? In some corners, Barry looks much more comfortable. If there's going to be a move, it might happen here because it's one of those tightest hairpins. You can see it's almost an inverted hairpin, right? More than 180 degrees as you kind of bend back in towards where you came from before you go left through the whoop section and into the wide sweeping turn number five. Some laps, Barry's like this. Six, seven, truck lengths up the road. Other times... If Proudfoot drives it in, he's on his door. This is going to be a question of if Proudfoot can get close enough to get door to door with him. Maybe they're in turn four on the last lap of this race. White flag going to be next time by. And we got a update from Cole Ashlock. He's out of this race because his PC uh, went out. Very unfortunate for Cole. Brandon Proudfoot behind Connor Berry, closing in more and more. But it's white flag in the air for Connor Berry. And it's clean track up the road. There's no traffic that's going to be a factor. You can see on your track map, one, two, going to the top of the track map and turn number two. They're not going to catch the likes of Briley and others. Proudfoot, the disadvantage, was one second last time by. Here's where he has his chance, but he's just too far back. He really swings it in, trying to get an early rotation, but he's got nothing for him. We started with four and five. We'll leave with five and six. It's a first time win for Connor Berry at Wild Horse Pass. What a win for Connor Berry. Led it from the start all the way to the end. And the 28 is in victory lane here today. Brandon Proudfoot, Cameron Peterson, Joshua Edmondson comes home in second through fourth. Brian Prudell carries his truck into fifth. But oh my goodness, Connor Barry is going to be extremely happy about that one. He's got to feel good, right? You know, I didn't talk much about him in the context of you know the last few weeks and, and you look at somebody who you know is not up there with all those other drivers right came into this one uh you know way down 18th in the championship with a limited amount of uh you know starts with only one i believe so what a way to come back after finishing fifth and the only one that he had run in prior to this uh to then go on and, and to get the race win here tonight um, Connor Berry making a point that, you know, he's not going to be able to fight for a podium in the championship, not going to be able to fight for that top spot, but he's a force to be reckoned with on the short courses here on the sim. Yeah, our race results. Connor Berry takes the win, followed by Brandon Proudfoot. Cameron Peterson gets up there in a third place. Is what the heck is happening? <laughs> I don't even want to know. <laughs> Cameron Peterson in third. Joshua Edmondson, Brian Prudell, Beauty Carrari, Jack Brucker, Zachary Jackson, Donald King, Josh Fox, Joshua Gaiman, Trey Briley, Tyson Miller, Cole Ashlock, with Oliver Golding showing up, but not taking part in this race. Well, and we said it coming in, right? We talked about the uh, the parody in this series with it being a three-way tie for second. Peterson only being so far up the road and now a, a fifth different race winner in six weeks. It's super, super impressive stuff. And it's going to have pretty big implications on the points, right? We don't have them uh, quite official at the moment, but Cam Peterson, who had the lead, comes home in third position. Brandon Proudfoot beating him by one single position. That was the points 
coming into this evening, which means that the swing will go in favor of Proudfoot by three. So I think it's going to go from a 14-point difference to an 11-point difference. That's still a big gap. Um, but, you know, this was a race that Cam Peterson won pretty handily. Uh, our first trip here, and he didn't get the job done this evening, ends up third step on the podium. Who's to say that, you know, we can't see some more different winners as we go to the short course to Crandon and the long one for the season finale. Uh, this championship is far from decided. Yeah, we have our race winner with us. Another different winner. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 28 of Connor Berry. What's up, guys? What's up, Connor? How you feeling after that? I'm feeling good. Um, I led from start to um finish, and it was just a fun, a just a a super fun race. It certainly looks like a lot of fun with you. At that start, not the immediately led off the line. Uh, you led off out out of turn two after a very well executed dive bomb on Brian Prudell. But you had a little bit of contact at the very start. Did that contact uh get you a little bit worried when you were? When you were traveling sideways through the air, um, yeah, I thought that I was going to go straight and in, straight into the wall and wreck, but I kept my I um kept my car straight and I got to the lead. All right, well, Connor, with that, you take another you take the win and another different driver to take the win. Uh, what's the differences of Wild Horse to the other parts of the series tracks? Um, wild, wild, wild horse it is just more tight and it's more just about being smooth and yeah. Well, Connor, with that win, uh, closes you in on the championship before I let you go. Anyone you want to thank? Yeah, I will. I actually want to thank my, um, my team, um, legacy race designs and, Sparko and CBR. All right. Thank you, Connor. Congrats on the win. You have yourself a amazing night. And standing with Evan, it is uh, Brandon Proudfoot. Hey, that's right. We're chatting with the driver of the number 22 truck. It's a P2 this afternoon from Wild Horse Pass for Brandon Proudfoot. Brandon, congratulations on a good result. Obviously, talk us through the invert, right? That's something that you're pretty much dealing with on a weekly basis, being one of those top trucks in the championship. But honestly, it looked like, at least before the competition yellow, that much of this race was, you know, Cam and Josh, and you know, fighting mid-pack. And it seemed that you were able to get kind of a leg up on them early to get some early track position. How'd that happen? Yeah, uh, we actually had a special incident here for this evening. Uh, we had kind of the impossible we had a three-way tie going into night for second that allowed all four of us to get a new EOL, eol this evening and uh i i kind of went around the outside for turn one and two and there was it was a pretty bad incident uh going into three and i was able to i don't know if josh uh fox went over me or happened just ahead of me and i just barely missed it i'm not sure but uh I was lucky enough to avoid that incident, and I th that gave me that split between those drivers there to let me P2 today. I feel like you would enjoy if uh, Wild West was still on the calendar. Of course, that's where you got the race win earlier, but we're going to go to Crandon, right, for two more weeks, short course, and then the longer layout. The gap of the championship, 14 points into this evening. I think unofficially that difference is going to come down to 12 due to the two-point difference between scoring second and Cam, who comes home in third place behind you. What is the objective, knowing that you're both going to be dealing with that invert likely, right, for the rest of this season, being in those top spots of the championship, where can you find those 12 points over the next few weeks, and specifically as we head back to the short layout at Crandon? Uh, for, for the short layout at Crandon, it's, it's, it's a tough track to pass. It's a lot, in my opinion, funner than what we got here at Wild Horse. A lot more passing opportunities, but I think, um, I think all in all, we're all, uh, us in the top four are all going to play safe next week. And it's really going to be all about that land rush on the final because there's no EOLs. We all start deadline 12 in a row or whatever the number is going to be for that evening. And it's going to be whoever gets free going into that first uh, land rush, I think is going to get it. It's been a hard working season for you on the cusp of uh, an opportunity to fight for the championship. And with a great result here at wild horse, uh, anybody want to say hi to when we got you? 
course, Fist Hole Bourbon, General Tire, Polis RZR, Vision Wheel, Ridge Industries, Dirt Fish, ASP, XTB Axles, Gibson Performance, Acrona, Saint Racing Fabrication, 07 Designs, Chris Leone, Motorsport Drop, Graham, Pat, Mom, Sister, Girlfriend, Downstairs, and you guys for doing the broadcast. Appreciate you giving us the time, Brandon. Congrats. Thank you, guys. It's your P2 finisher tonight for the virtual Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park. We'll flip it over to the teammate, Austin, chat with Cam Peterson. Cameron, how is that race uh, starting from all the way to the back and uh, making your way up into third? Yeah, that was rough. Um, third is an awesome, uh, awesome finish for me tonight, starting dead last there. So, um, truck got beat up quite a bit there. Um, I got in the back of Brian after he got a little too, uh, a little too free on the exit of three, and uh, my truck got a tons of damage, and I slowed down by almost a second a lap and. I was thinking maybe Josh was going to catch me at the end, but uh, yeah, anything can happen. Um, just got to focus on making the truck last and make uh, the most of other people's mistakes. Well, at the start of this race, uh, it didn't look like the best start, and then turn three happened. What was your uh, reaction like going through that uh, pile up? Uh, it was kind of expected in a way. I mean, Pro 2 is a wild, ho a wild horse. I mean, these guys are awesome drivers, and it still proves how tough this track is. Um, if you don't keep up your speed, then your truck just snaps straight. And next thing you know, there's a pileup going on behind you because you slowed down too much for the guy behind you. And it's just a train and accordion effect. And uh, yeah, it's so easy to get tied up in that stuff. So like I said, it's expected. Just kind of have to wait for it. Um, the high line is usually the clear line. And that's kind of what I took and getting some spots early. Um, I seen Brandon, he got, uh, he got up there pretty quick in the first few laps and uh that was good to see um but yeah uh great race happy to come home third well cameron you still lead the championship it's coming down are you a bit worried in these uh closing rounds uh i think i have the best seat in the house so to speak there's no more end of lines for the uh for the leaders because these are these are land rush starts that we're going into um so i think that's a big advantage um, I have 12 points of wiggle room and, uh, and that's against just Brandon and, uh, I'm not sure about third or fourth, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. Just got to hit my marks aim for, I'm sure if I get two top fives, um, I should be able to clinch it hopefully. So yeah, just, uh, be smooth and, uh, hit my marks and, uh, yeah, make the most out of, uh, every moment. All right, Cameron, you're still leading the championship, heading into the final Crandon rounds of the race. Before we let you go, anyone you want to thank? Yeah, I want to thank you guys, Austin, Evan, Racecraft TV, Josh, for putting all this on. It uh, gives the series a lot of notoriety, and um, it's pretty cool. They're racing against some of the pro best Pro 2 drivers in the service. So um, I want to thank Fistful of Bourbon, General Tire, Players Razor, uh, Vision, Vision Wheel, Rigid, Rigid Industries, uh, Dirtfish, GSP, AXTV Axles, Gibson Performance, Acronis, and Sand Racing Fabrication. How's after those guys? All right. Congrats, Cam. Hope you have a good afternoon. Evan, any uh, closing comments? Well, it gets tighter, right? I mean, we talked about this after Wild West last week when we got our first look at that three-way tie for second, third, and fourth in the championship. And, and it was a bit of a, a rough night, I think, when you talk about expectations for Josh Gaiman, right? He was the one that was the big winner last week. The big loser this week is going to fall out of that three-way tie. Second, third, fourth, they're still very much up for grabs, not mathematically out of it. The battle for the very top step on the championship, but you heard Cam say it right there. He'd rather be uh, on the defensive going into it and have that lead than be the one scrambling late, right? So he feels like he's got the best seat in the house. We've got two incredible races coming up at Crandon next time out, December the 20th, and then the championship finale. Back where we started it all for the long circuit at the big house on January the 3rd. Just hope everybody tunes in and enjoys the action with us. Thank you, everyone, for hopping in here on Racecraft TV for another fantastic round of the Pro 2 Championship. And like another wild race at wild horse pass we got two more waiting for us at Crandon to end out the season for evan pasoko i'm austin knight and i hope y'all have a fantastic night this racecraft tv stream is brought to you by artesian builds artesian builds high quality custom pcs made to order for a low price contact artesian builds today to get started on your own custom pc as low as 64 dollars a month
All Artesian builds are made live on stream. You can watch your builds and talk to the builders live at twitch.tv forward slash Artesian builds. For more information about Artesian builds, check the link in the description.